Recently, I did my first ever 100 days video with my friend Javi, and it was so cool to see how much you can get done in 100 Minecraft days. But it got me thinking, in most 100 days videos, you start from scratch. But how much could I get done in the same amount of time on my well-established 10-year-old super flat survival world? That's what we're finding out today. Okay, now, before I get started, there's just one thing I need to make clear. I have no idea how many days old this world is. Back in 2012, when I made this world, statistics didn't even exist. And over the years, mine have been corrupted or reset several times. It's just impossible to know. But don't take it from me, take it from this legendary YouTuber whose world is only a few months older than mine. When we started the world, statistics didn't even exist, so they're not accurate anyway. Uh, and they got corrupted once in the past too. Well putty though. So here we are, it's the night of day 2249. I'm gonna go to sleep and it'll be day 2250. All right, let's get started. I kicked off day zero by heading to the nether to repair my tools at my piglin farm. With my tools ready to go, it was time to get to work on our first project, finishing off the Mason department store, or as I like to call it, Macy's. The focus of these hundred days is gonna be finishing off as much of the lower part of my city as possible. With some of the biggest goals for our world recently completed, it only makes sense to chip away at the biggest task of all, filling in our massive city. I spent most of the day struggling with armor stands to make this really cool display case, and as the night turned stormy, I finished off the lower level with this fancy ceiling fan. The next day, I moved on to the second floor. I made a staircase to get up to the attic and roof, and then worked on some nice furniture to fill in the space a little. I made a nice big fireplace to tie into the chimney on the exterior of the building, and then I went to craft some campfires and cartography tables for decorating. On day two, I finished up the second floor with a fancy little couch, and then decorated the attic and the roof a bit. Finishing up Macy's was a good warm up, but it was time to move on to some bigger projects. I spent the next morning gathering up my materials, and then I set to work on a nice big bank. I spent the entirety of of day four working on building up the bank. I worked a bit on the back entrance, which is on the second floor, and a vault area, which will be in the basement. After another full day of work, the front of the building was looking pretty much finished, and by the end of day six, the right side was just about done as well. I wrapped up the left and the back side of the building on day seven, and grabbed some terracotta to use for a nice trim at the top of the building. With the back pretty much finished, I moved on to the roof on day eight, and by day nine, the roof was complete, and I was back to working on the interior. On day 10, I made big progress on the interior. I used cartography tables for the counters, which which is a really cool trick. It only works in a few directions due to the texture, but I got lucky and none of the ugly sides were showing. I used loads and loads of trapdoors on this, and I also crafted up a beacon to use as a light table for like checking counterfeit money. Then on day 11, I worked on creating the vault. I think it came out really cool. I'm thinking maybe at some point I'll store like my extra diamonds and gold here. The next day I built up the balcony on the second floor and I made a spiral staircase to get up. I also added a few more details to the bottom floor, which really helps it feel complete. On day 13, I went to grab some blackstone and then began the third floor. I got harassed for a while by this gold skeleton. I guess he thought the bank was open for business. He's clearly a high rolling gentleman. I kicked off day 14 by building a nice fancy chandelier, and then I visited my bee farm to craft up loads of beehives. These things make great filing cabinets, and I figure a bank would have a lot of records. I also ran out of flower pots and had to run back to my base to craft some more. By day 15, the third floor was just about finished. I got to see a bat get shot in the face by a skeleton, which made my day. And then I tried to make one of those book cart things you see in libraries, but I ended up just making some sort of reading motorcycle. I call it the bookmobile. Somehow a creeper found his way into it, so I guess he just lives there forever now. This guy is truly hooked on phonics. What should we name him? I used a ton of beehives again on day 16 while finishing up the attic of the building. I figured the attic would best serve as some sort of like archival record storage. By the morning of day 17, the bank was officially complete. I spent the day cleaning up my shulkers and gathering up materials for my next big project covering up our mushroom stem farm. I love building with mushroom stems, but getting them in bulk is such a pain that a while back, I decided to build this amazing automatic farm by Alex Bomberg. But it's been a real eyesore in my world, so I'm gonna hide it inside of a giant mushroom. I actually designed the mushroom in creative with my good friend Snippet a few months back on a live stream, so all I really have to do is copy over the design. As the sun rose on day 18, I headed over to the mob hotel to grab some bone blocks to give our mushroom stem a bit of texture. But after building up the stem for a while, I got nervous and I wanted to double check that the farm was still functioning. Luckily it was, so I got back to work after a bat took a bullet for a creeper. That bat should join the secret service. On day 19, I worked on cleaning up the interior of our shroom a bit. And then I visited our mob hotel once again, this time to visit our hanging root farm. The roots are a really nice touch. I concluded our second 10 days by expanding the staircase in front to give access to the area where the farm is restocked with mushrooms and bone meal. I also blended the terraforming a bit and hid some lighting around under moss carpets. We're already 20 days in, and we've actually accomplished a lot, so I thought I'd give you 
guys a closer look. Having the terracotta store all finished up is just really nice. I come here quite frequently and it just looks so much better than it did. And it makes the city so immersive when every single part of the building is filled up with detail. The bank was a really fun build and is such an awesome addition to the town. I think all the details behind these counters came out really, really cool. I'm a big fan of this vault and I really love the idea of coming up here and seeing all the bank records and files and this guy. We're making really good progress on this mushroom as well and I'm hoping I can get it somewhat finished in about 10 days. So let's get working. On day 21, it was back to work on the mushroom stem. I added some little shelf mushrooms to the side like you see on trees sometimes and they came out really cool. By the next day, I was ready to start the mushroom cap. For this, I'm gonna need a bunch of oxidized copper. So I went ahead and laid out a copper field so it can convert while I build. I got as far as I could on the mushroom cap on day 23, but I really wanna use diamond blocks as the little spots and I don't really have a ton of diamonds. So it was time to go on a massive end raiding adventure. See, the only way to get diamonds in Superflat is to find them in loot chests, and end cities are really your best option. Luckily, I rarely need raw diamonds, since tools and armor are easily traded for. Essentially, raw diamonds are only used for enchanting tables, fancy fireworks, jukeboxes, and in our case, diamond blocks. And so days 24 through 28 were spent looting chests and slaying shulkers. Needless to say, I was very relieved to return home safely on the 29th day. By the end of it, I had 24 diamond blocks. Not bad for under two hours of work. I also had shulkers full of diamond loot. And I spent most of that day putting away the several shulkers full of goodies that I had acquired. While doing so, I cleaned up some chests that have been cluttering up my trading hall for forever. Doesn't it feel so good to get organized in this game? It's like that feeling you get when cleaning in real life, but even better, because you don't have to move. I spent day 30 gathering up the oxidized copper and adding it to the mushroom cap. When it turned night, I was attacked by phantoms and I totally forgot that I've not been sleeping for the sake of the video. Oops. Luckily, this is the only time I slept during the 100 days. On day 31, I got some of the diamond blocks in place on top of our mushroom, and man, do they look cool. I'd say it was worth it spending all that time in the end. All the diamonds seem to have attracted a visitor. It's always good to visit with my old friend. I got some ice from him, but unfortunately, he didn't have any tropical fish or brown dye, both of which I've been needing. Maybe next time. I needed to wait for more copper to oxidize, so I said goodbye to Wandy T and then headed over to work closer to the copper field. I already had the foundation of a house started here, but I replaced the white terracotta with bricks and regular terracotta. Before the newest update, terracotta was so hard to get. I would have to rely on clay gifts from masons when I had the hero of the village status effect. But now that you can dry out mud into clay, it's so much easier to get in bulk. But I digress. On day 33, I finished up the roof of the building using the new mangrove wood. This truly is a 1.19 build. The next day I finished up with the interior and it came out really cozy. With the house finished, I went to check on my copper on day 35 and it looked like I would have enough to finish the cap. Sure enough, by day 36, the cap was complete, so I began to work on a little shed area to conceal the chests I used to stock the farm. I decided to add an outdoor porch area as well, just to give the area some more interest. I spent the entirety of day 37 continuing to decorate, but at nighttime, the mobs began getting in my way, so I made sure to light up the area a bit. Work on the porch area continued through day 38, and right before nighttime, I took a break to place soul lanterns on all the diamond spots on the mushroom cap. It gives the mushroom this cool glowing effect that I think looks super cool at night. I then spent the rest of the evening placing these little drippy nether brick things, which was inspired by one of my favorite mushrooms, the inky cap. These things look so magical. The next morning, I ran over to my super smelter to smelt some nether bricks in order to craft up some more nether brick fences. After finishing off the drippies, I went ahead and crafted up some sandstone, which we'll be using for the little ribs under the mushroom cap. Apparently they're called lamella? Lamella. Lamella. This was the only part of the build that I actually designed in world edit. Using the line command made it so easy to get the effect I was going for. It was a bit annoying to replicate in survival, but it looks so good. I topped off the sandstone by adding some oak wood and packed mud above. But before I could finish, I ran out of packed mud. So on days 40 and 41, I spent my time gathering up some more mud. I should mention before making this video, I spent an entire afternoon rebuilding the blast chamber for this farm, which unfortunately exploded while I was working on our giant end base in the last video. Somehow my cat turned off the power strip for my PC and the footage for days 42 and 43 got corrupted. But basically I spent day 42 running wood through the farm just to stress test it and make sure it wouldn't explode again. And then after placing the last of the packed mud, I spent day 43 getting all the final decorations in place for the porch area. I rebooted my PC and got back to work by spending day 44 baking some cakes and finishing up the little side building attached to the porch. The next day I placed all the cakes around and put in a little more work on the interior of the mushroom stem. By day 46, the mushroom was officially done. At this point, I decided to give the farm another test, just to make sure I hadn't messed up any of the redstone while building everything. Luckily, the farm still ran like a dream. 
can't tell you how happy I am to finally have this farm dressed up. It's gonna make using it so much nicer. I'm just very pleased with how it came out. I cleaned up all my shulker boxes on day 47, and I decided to spend the rest of the day making a few farms to dress up the path between the windmill and the mushroom. These were directly inspired by some Instagram posts I saw by Bure Builds or Bure Builds, not quite sure how to pronounce it, but they have some insane designs, including all of these incredibly detailed fossil tutorials up on their YouTube page. Go check them out, seriously. Anyways, the next day I took a short flight over my mountain range to grab some pods all, and then I finished up the farms and began improving the paths around the area. I spent the evening carving another path up to the windmill on the little hill behind our bee farm. Connecting everything up just makes the city feel so much more immersive. I spent day 49 adding a few more little mushrooms around our big one, and just doing some finishing touches on the whole area. And as we hit our halfway point on day 50, I decided it was time to start another big project. But before doing that, I just wanted to quickly build a little mud hut in the empty space next to our little mangrove roof building. I worked on it all day, and by day 51 it was finished, and I began gathering the materials for our next project. I laid the foundation for what will be a naval academy, where the sailors of this harbor earn their sea legs. The whole building is built on a diagonal, so it should be a fun challenge. On day 52, I built a little windsock, and then I started laying in the floors of the building. The next day I got started on the classroom area. I'm using lecterns for the desks, which I think looks pretty good. On day 54, I turned my attention to this cafeteria area, and I made a little janitor's closet in this awkward corner of the build. One thing I thought would be really cool is making some banners of the nautical alphabet. So I spent the entirety of day 55 designing the banners, and then day 56 naming them and making copies. Making loads of banners like this is so time consuming. But if the cyberpunk city taught me anything, it's how much of a difference they can make when it comes to immersion and detail. Finally, I was ready to place them around on day 57, and afterwards I worked on the roof, which is a mix of jungle, acacia, and granite. On day 58, I took a break to go trade with the cartographer villager for the globe banner pattern which I've apparently never done. I used the pattern to make a cute little globe banner for the classroom. Afterwards, I got to work on the ceiling. I made some ceiling rafters with lots of buoys stored above like you might see in an old boathouse. On day 59, I added a wire between the tower part of the building and the lower part of the roof. I think when the build's done, I'm gonna hang some nautical banners here. I also built this little hanging boat in the classroom. At first, I wasn't sure how it looked, but holy moly, I'm in love with it. It makes the classroom feel so immersive. By day 60, the build was nearly done. I made a little area in the back of the build for boat storage, and then I decided to build a little tree next to it with jungle fences and leaves. These kind of trees are so easy to make and they come out so good, so while I had the materials in my hotbar, I decided to build a few more around town. And I also hit this sick trick shot. Dude, perfect. The only part of the building left to do is the tower, so on day 61 I worked on building it up a bit and planning out where the staircase will go. I spent the entire next day working on the interior for the tower, where the sailors bunk together, and I turned the very top into sort of like a bell tower. By day 63 I was putting on the finishing touches. I added this little fire escape to the side of the tower, which really helps the front feel a bit less empty and awkward. Finally, on day 64, I was ready to call the build finished, so I added the naval flags to the wire as promised. Can you tell what it says? With the Naval Academy finished, it was time to start a new project, so I packed up my shulker boxes and moved next door to make a flower shop. I chose a really fun color palette for this build, and I actually think it fits pretty well with the area. Also, I slayed a spider jockey the same moment that lightning struck, which just felt pretty metal, so I had to share it. The next day was another banner day. This time I spelled out flowers for the storefront. This didn't take nearly as long as the nautical banners, so afterwards I had time to put in the floors of the building. On day 66 I had a mossy roof to the building with loads of little tulips, and then I worked on a little stall for out front. I love using campfires as like a trellis or a, or a pergola, an, an arbor. Someone explain the difference, please. A cool trick you can do is to put kelp on the campfires and they kind of look like fallen leaves. On day 67, I added a second floor to the building and then decorated as much as I could. I spent way too much time on day 68 adding these fancy signs above the counter, but I think it was worth all the copy and pasting weird symbols. This just looks so cute. I figured a flower shop would be selling some hose, so I wasted an entire netherite ingot just for the decoration. Was it worth it? Who knows? On funny number day, I crafted a respawn anchor to decorate the bedroom, and I crafted this neat mirror banner to go above it. But the decoration still didn't feel expensive enough, so the next day I went to my sketchy obsidian box under bedrock where I kill withers now. I used to murder them using the end portal like a normal person, but now my end portal is decorated all nicely. After I got the nether star, I crafted a beacon to use as a little crystal ball at the end of the bed. I'm guessing the lady who runs this flower shop is into some witchy stuff, like 
don't know, astrology and tarot cards. Too bad I can't get Amethyst because she would definitely have some crystals. Anyhow, the flower shop was now pretty much finished, so I went ahead and built up the path a little. I'm sure most of you guys know this trick, but dried out brain coral can be great for a little variation. On day 71, I began yet another new building. One of my goals for this world is to have a building for each villager profession. So this is gonna be the building for the fishermen. I'm going for like an eclectic shack sort of look. I had to clean up this little area that I used to restock the bees in the bee farm whenever they mysteriously disappear. Does this happen to anyone else? Like they just disappear sometimes. I guess I'll have to make a new place for restocking bees at some point. I kicked off day 72 by working on a little market stall for selling fish. I also added like a crow's nest sort of tower that I plan to connect to the fishing shack with a rope bridge. I finished up the day with some little details around the base of the structure, like a boulder and some scattered barrels. I spent most of day 73 working on blending paths around the area, and by the morning of day 74, it was looking so much better. I spent the rest of the day decorating even more. I added an anchor, a life preserver, some lobster traps, and a big swordfish. Before I knew it, we were already three quarters of the way through 100 days. I was very much feeling the urgency, but I pressed forward and traded with some villagers for cod to create a little pool of them. I also went through and made sure all of the item frames had items. On day 76, I began expanding the building upwards. I made some spots where the fishermen villagers will go eventually. I'm gonna worry about getting the villagers here some other time. That's probably a stream project. I also had to go craft some more campfires and smelt a bit more terracotta. By day 77, I was onto the third floor of the structure. I decided to use mangrove wood again for the roof, and once that was in place, I started getting in a lot of the final decorations. I was really proud of this telescope I made on day 78 by pushing a lightning rod into an armor stand. And I was also really proud of this weather vane design I made. I just love being creative in this game. I finished up the day by building the catwalk between the crow's nest and the shack. A catwalk to a crow's nest. Almost sounds like the start of a bad joke. So a cat and a crow walk into a bar. <laughs> With the building basically finished, I spent day 79 creating some miscellaneous banners to hang along the rope bridge. After that, I decided to do a few more custom trees to add some more greenery to the area. I started out with a pine tree, but while I was collecting some leaves to use, I accidentally broke my enchanted shears. So I visited my library and made a new pair. Does anyone else enchant their shears? Is it just me? It's just me, isn't it? The next day, I built a custom peach tree. Adding pink terracotta for the peaches is another idea I got from Bure Builds. Huge shout out to them. After finishing those trees, I decided to add a lot more decorations to my moss factory. So I got my shulkers ready, and the next morning, I began decorating and trying to make the entrance into the basement look a little bit better. I wanted to set up a minecart that goes back and forth to give the area a bit of life. So on day 82, I went ahead and built some scaffolding, and then I set up a loading dock where the minecart can deliver the moss. I decided to build a little shed to match the bigger factory and also to fill in some of the empty space. So I worked on it all of day 83 until night fell and it began to thunder. I wanted to try to get a skeleton skull because I have a cool idea for some fish bones. After frantically running around all night catching charge creepers and boats, I had a setup for each type of mob head. But the skeleton didn't die and the normal creeper blew up the charge creeper. So the only one that really panned out was the zombie. One for three, not great. But I brushed off that frustrating experience and turned my attention back to the shed, finishing off the roof by the end of day 84. On day 85, I began putting in all the little finishing touches, cause the little details matter. With the shed pretty much finished, I just had to make the minecart go back and forth. I laid down the tracks and it looked cool and all, but I want the minecart to stop for a few seconds when it reaches the shed before it takes off again. But rather than dive into this daunting redstone task, I went back to my base to refill my fireworks shulker. But by the dawn of the next day, I could delay no more and I dove into making the worst redstone of my life. Like seriously, this is a monstrosity. I'm not even quite sure why or how it works, but somehow it did what I wanted. My brain was totally shot from that experience, so I decided to get back to building. It was time to fill in the last few red outlines that have been lingering in the city for almost two years now. This first building is gonna be like a warehouse with a big crane for grabbing cargo off ships. I quickly built up the walls and by day 87, I was putting in the roof. I've never really done a copper roof in the city, so I decided to try my hand at one of those nice copper gradients. The next day I worked on all the interior details and finally on day 89, I added in the crane on the roof. I spent another netherite ingot on the lodestone for the crane. I think this is the third lodestone I've made purely for decoration in this world. But what can I say? They just look so cool. I had a little time left in the day to begin the final building in this lower section of the city. Since it was nice and small, I was able to work super fast and by day 90, I was finishing up the interior. I wanted to use blackstone for the roof, but I couldn't find my blackstone shulker box anywhere. So I reviewed the footage and discovered that my blackstone shulker had avoided being picked up and had despawned forever. 
Not a big deal since I can just piglin barter for more blackstone, but I was kind of bummed out about losing all my gilded blackstone since it's great for decorating and kind of a pain to get. But that's a problem for future Mog. I headed to my piglin bartering farm to replace the old shulker, and then I visited my sea pickle farm since I had finally run out. I guess I use a lot of these when I decorate. The next day I gathered up a bit more mud since I was out of that as well, and with those materials I was able to finish the building up. With only 10 days left, it was time to get in as many finishing touches on this section of the city as possible. A few of the interiors really needed some work, so I headed to my base to grab some armor sets and got to decorating. But after staring at the purple roof building for a few minutes, I realized I hate the color palette and I decided to switch it up. Most of day 92 was spent swapping blocks out, but I was happy I did it because this new light gray terracotta and dripstone combo looks really unique and interesting. On day 93, I focused on the interior and I came up with this piano design I'm really proud of. So proud in fact that I tweeted about it, which is like the adult Minecrafter equivalent of bringing home a drawing to put on the fridge. I also moved next door to finish up the interior on the blue roof building. By day 94, that building was done too, and the next day I moved on to this tiny little greenhouse building. That didn't take long at all, and so I moved on to the final remaining interior, the second floor of this smokehouse building. I started by using the few leftover diamonds I had to make an enchantment table. This interior was a huge challenge due to the floor being half slabs, so I really had to get creative. As the sun rose on day 96, I went to go dye some leather armor. I've been having a lot of fun mixing the dye colors together to get some really weird hues. I always forget that this is a feature. I finished up the interior, meaning that the entire lower city was now pretty much complete. I spent the rest of the day making a candle banner, and then the next day I used it to make a little candle stand outside of Macy's. I also added a little booth selling the armor and tools from the next door Black Cat Blacksmith. Then I headed over to the crane building to add some bundles of wood that the crane would have grabbed off of ships. On day 98, I set up some cannons and TNT over by the inn. I built up a bunch of crates and barrels, but it was a bit slow since I was constantly being rushed by mobs. I really need to do a better job of lighting up this area. On day 99, I added sort of a boat launch loading system to the docks, and then suddenly it was day 100. That really snuck up on me. Not wanting to waste a single moment, I spent the full day building some extra booths along the docks, and I made a little staircase by our bank. But as the sun rose on day 101, I had to accept that the 100 days were over. A hundred days down, and I'm actually impressed with how much we got done. If I can fill in the whole city like this, this will really become my dream world. The world I've wanted since I was a kid. Totally immersive and full of life. I just hope I can get there someday. But if we keep going like this, I'm sure it won't take long. Thanks for watching.